Hello everyone, my name is Michael McCann and welcome to this Wayward Art Company tutorial on creating a character in Blender 2.77. And I wanted to do something a little different than what's typically done, you know, cats and dogs and such. So I, I chose Arizona's state mammal, which is the ringtail. It's a very interesting animal. And the art style is taken from Zootopia, which I recently saw and loved. Uh, so basically the art style will follow something similar to that. And this tutorial will be several parts, so that'll allow us time to go through the modeling and all of the materials for the character, and as well as, you know, creating an armature and doing shape keys for posing and animation. I'll be using Blender 2.77 for this tutorial, which is the most current version available at the time of this recording. But the first thing that we'll need is our reference image to model our character. And I'll leave a link in the description. But if you go to my YouTube channel, you can also click on the Facebook link, which will take you to the Facebook page for Wayward Art Company. And you can click here to get the link from Dropbox. And then, of course, just download it here. Now press N to bring up your options on the side and scroll all the way down and check Background Image. And then Add Image. And then Open. And just find wherever you downloaded the image. In my case, it's on my desktop. And in the background image settings, I can move the opacity all the way up. This allows me to see the image a little more clearly. And it's a PNG, so there's no background, which is nice. Uh, but I want to slide the image up so that the character's feet are resting on the x-axis line, that red line. Now I've split my view. And on the left-hand side, I'm in front orthographic view. You can get there by hitting 1 on the numpad. And on the right side, I want to be in right orthographic view. And you can get there by hitting 3 on the number pad. Now in front orthographic view, I want the z-axis, this blue line, to, to match up with the center of my character. Uh, and I can do that by just sliding the image down. But in order to get it more accurate, I'll need to zoom in. And now if I hold shift, I can drag this image down in smaller increments. Okay, and that looks centered really well. In right orthographic, however, you can just do this by eye. It isn't as important for it to be, um, you know, centered perfectly. Something like that should be fine. Now I'll press tab and go into edit mode and drag the cube up so that it's positioned around the character's torso and that leaves the pivot point still at the feet. And here in the background image settings we can actually specify from which view we can see the image. So, so in right orthographic I only want to see it from the right side and from front orthographic I only want to see it from the front. And now I'll type Z, which takes you into wireframe view. And I can just position the cube a little better around the torso. So I'll, I'll box select the bottom vertices, and I'll drag it all the way down to where the stomach ends. And I can select everything with A, and then type S, Shift, Z, which scales on the Y and X axes only. And then use Control R to put a loop cut down the middle. Then I can go into wireframe and use B to box select and delete the vertices on the left hand side. And now I can add my mirror modifier. So I'll just go to my modifiers tab, select add modifier and choose mirror. The vertices in the center of course need to have the clipping applied here. And I also like to select this, it's Adjust Edit Cage to Modifier Result. It just lets you uh, select the vertices on, on both sides. So now, within the torso, there's four edge loops. Uh, but right now, we're just going to concentrate on the bottom three. So we can just use Control r and then use the mouse wheel to scroll up and add three edge loops. And just try to line them up roughly with the reference image. So now in front orthographic view, I can just box select each edge loop and scale it in on the x-axis. 
and then do the same thing in the right orthographic view except I'll be scaling it on Y. And of course we're not starting at the top, we're starting at the first of the three edge loops that we just, just created. So I can scale this in and move it forward. And rather than using box select, you can also use C, which is just the uh, the selection tool to select each individual vertex and just you know move it forward manually, which works just as well. All right, now we can add that first edge loop up here at the top and that will allow us to bring the chest in, the, the vertices at the top, and also move the, the back vertices forward. So now we have a very basic torso, but uh, we need to give it a little more geometry. So I'm going to add one loop cut in the front, which adds it on the mirrored side as well, and then another one on the side. And these will allow us to, to uh, round the body out a little. So if I select this uh, edge along the, the side, in my top orthographic view, which you can get to by hitting 7, I can just use G to grab this back, and, and it sort of smooths out or rounds out the corners. And I'm going to do the same thing for the back, uh, but I'm not going to do it as much. Uh, I, I like the back to be a little flatter and the, the chest area to be a little more round. Okay, so that's looking good. And we can start to add a little bit of definition in the chest now that we added that uh, fourth uh, additional uh, loop at the top. So I can grab this vertex and just pull it down on Z and then out a little on X and grab this vertex as well. And this will be a little more obvious when we add the subsurf. So I think maybe I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Give it a subdivision surface modifier. And even though the character will be covered in hair, it's still a good idea to give the, the body the general shape um, and a little bit of extra detail and, and definition. So I'll grab these vertices here and just pull them forward to uh, to give some shape to the pectoral muscles. And I can grab this vertex in the center and move it up and back a little. And this will, um, you know, sort of act as like the, the bottom of the rib cage or the where the sternum is. Again, these are just subtle details and and you know they will be covered in hair, but it uh, it does make a little bit of a difference to just take the time and do it. Now at the bottom of the torso, I want to select these faces and just extrude them down with E and move them toward the center slightly. Okay, now I need to add a, a loop with Control R and I can select this edge in the front and just pull it up a little. I'm just using G I'll do the same thing with the back and then select this edge here and pull the back side out a little. And then I just want to delete these six faces. I can select these edges on the bottom and sort of round out the, the crotch a little. And the front of this is going to be a little more narrow than the back. So I want to pull this in and then I can hit Control 1, which, uh, which is the back view. I can select these edges and rotate and then pull them out. And that way the, the back side will be a little more uh, wider than the, the crotch area. Now I can select this entire loop by holding Alt and right clicking on the edge. And if you notice these red areas on the reference image, I'm going to talk a little bit about those in a moment. But for right now, uh, we're just going to hit E to extrude. And we're going to pull it out a little bit. Now I can select these faces on the bottom and pull the crotch down a little. 
I, I don't need to this to fit the reference image perfectly. I think I modeled this like three or four times, and each time I did it a little differently. So I'm basically just using it as a, a guideline. So I'm going to select these four faces where the arm will be extruded from, and I'm just going to move it back. And then use I to inset and then type X and choose delete faces. Okay, uh, so I think I want to bring the, the shoulders up a little bit too. So I can pull, mm, actually maybe I'll just go ahead and delete the uh, the area where the neck will be extruded from. So these four faces and type X and delete faces. Now I can scale this out and move it up. And it looks like it got a little weird there on the right orthographic view. So I'll scale that in on Y. So now about these little rings that I add around the, the legs and the arms, the red area on the reference image. Um, basically, so if you were just to extrude the arm, say, um, and then try to animate, what typically happens is there's a little bit of stretching under the arm or around the rib, uh, the rib cage or on the shoulders. And it's the same with the legs, uh, you know, typically around the groin area, there's some stretching. So by adding that extra loop, um, you're basically just adding one more layer of geometry between the arm or the leg and then the body. And of course you can fix some of it with weight painting, but this little loop just typically helps uh, with look, it just helps make it look a little more natural. Now I'm typing W and selecting loop tools and choosing circle. And if you don't have loop tools enabled, I strongly recommend that you enable it in your user preferences. So go File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and then just search Loop. And then make sure you check the little box and click Save User Settings. And that just cleans up the geometry a lot. It makes it a little easier to work with. Um, and I'm not going to be extruding the arms straight out like a T-pose, which some animators prefer to work with. I'm actually going to create a shoulder um, to, to help extrude the arms down so that he's uh, in more of a, a resting position. So I can select these two edges at the top where the top of the shoulder would be. And I'm going to extrude them out and then down. And then select these three edges and type F to face. And I can do the same in the back. F to add a face. Okay, so now I want to select some of these vertices and try and round out the top of where the uh, leg will be extruded from because this will be sort of the, the thigh and it should be a little rounded at the top. Okay, so that looks good. And just like in the uh, shoulder, um, we're going to ex sort of extrude this out and down, um, not really to change the direction of the leg. In this instance, it's more just to create the uh, that you know large thigh muscle that most you know quadrupeds have so um, you know we'll just select these two edges and extrude them out and down and then select these three edges and type F to add a face and do the same again in the back and then we're going to extrude these sides down one more time and then add another face in the front and in the back All right, so now I can begin to extrude these arms down. So I'll make one extrusion and then type W and select loop tools and circle, and then just scale and rotate it so that it, it sort of uh, fits along with the reference image. And I'm going to need to do this from the front and the side sort of at the same time to make sure that they're, you know, lining up from both angles. And I'll just continue to extrude down. Uh, at this 
uh, point, which is the elbow, the arm is going to start moving forward a little. So I'm just going to rotate and you know keep uh, keep pulling it forward in the right orthographic view. And scale this down because this is where the, the wrists will start. I'm going to add a little bit of definition to the back by just pulling in these vertices and then pulling these out, which would be where the, uh, the shoulder blades would be. Okay, that's just a little extra detail. Um, so something I noticed on the reference image is I, I should have maybe rotated uh, the thigh muscle so that it was facing the direction in which the leg is going, which is forward. Uh, so I can do that in in this model. Um, so I'm just going to scale in the legs and uh, maybe fit it around the reference image a little better. And then extrude down and type W and choose loop tools and circle. And then scale in with S and rotate with R. And just like the arms, I, I'm doing this on both sides, just make sh making sure that it's lining up with the front and the side. And now I can select all of these faces that make up the uh, the hip or the thigh muscle, and then I'm just going to rotate this a little bit so that it, again, it's just following more in the direction that the leg is actually, you know, going. All right, so now I can continue to just extrude this leg down, and you may have noticed on the arms, and I'm going to do the same thing on the legs. Um, I'm going to stop one edge loop before I reach the ankle and the wrist, which are those green areas on the reference image. And there is a reason that I'm doing that, why I'm leaving that little gap. And we'll talk about those green areas um, in just a moment. But uh, for right now, you know, again, I am leaving this little gap because we're essentially going to bridge, bridge them later. But that's the body mostly done, and now it's just basically the hard parts is the hand and the hands and the feet and the uh, the head of course so we can begin that now but first I'm going to go ahead and save my project so we'll begin with the hands first I'm going to hold alt and select the loop around the wrist and then I will type shift s and choose cursor to select it And I'll type Shift A and add a circle. And bring up my menu with T. And I'll take the vertice count down to 8. And I can reduce the size as well, or I can just scale this manually with S. Okay, so now I'll move it out to the side. So now both the circle and the ring around the wrist have the same amount of vertices. All right, so now I can extrude this down on Z by hitting E and Z to lock it to the Z axis. And with that loop still selected, I'll just press F, which will add a face and then switch to vertex select and select opposite vertices and use J to join them. And so now if I were to extrude from the wrist right now, uh, there would only be enough geometry to create two fingers. Uh, so that doesn't really work. So we're going to actually add a triangle at the wrist, which will allow us to add three fingers. And that's these uh, green areas on the, the reference image. So with that middle edge selected, I can just type V, which is the rip tool. It just separates that edge. And I can move them apart from one another. And now to join all of this back up, I'm going to select these top two vertices and type Alt-M and merge at the center. And I'll do the same with these back vertices. 
and then use edge select to select these opposite edges and type W and choose bridge edge loops and that should connect to that then I can select these three edges and type F and add a face okay so there's our wrist and again this this gives us three rows now so we can uh, we can create three fingers so I'm just going to select all of the faces on the bottom and extrude down and then scale this on Y so that it's a bit wider like a hand and then with control R I'm going to add a loop just tweaking the shape of the the hand a little I can select these two faces and delete them that's where the thumb will be extruded from and I'll also delete these two middle faces because that's where the middle finger will be extruded from and that's the first finger that we will work on so I'll select this edge and type W and choose loop tools and circle and scale that down so now I can extrude the finger down by hitting E and then Z to lock it to the Z axis and then extrude down again and scale out and then one last time and scale in which gives it a little more of a rounded shape at the tip and then press F to add a face and then select these opposite vertices and join them with J. Now I can select the top face and press I to inset and then E to extrude that down and scale the tip to a point and this loop I can select and scale in and then select this bottom face and pull it forward a little and that creates a little claw or a nail for the tip of the finger so that's one finger done now I can just delete these two faces and go into side view and select the bottom part of the finger not I want to leave that loop um, unselected and shift D to duplicate it and rotate it and then holding alt I can use the right mouse click to select these two edges and press W and bridge edge loops and so that connects the the tip of the finger to the hand and I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side I'll just select these faces and shift to D and rotate them and because this will be like the little finger I'll scale it in just a little bit then select these two faces press X and delete the faces and again just select these two edges W and bridge edge loops then I'll just clean up the geometry a little bit and, and tweak the vertices and make them look a little uh, neater. And I can select all the fingers and pull them out a little. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, now I can select this loop and extrude the thumb out. and then extrude out again and scale it and then extrude one more time scale in and then type F to add a face and then I can just join these two vertices by selecting them and typing J And with the two faces at the tip of the thumb selected, I can use I to inset and then E to extrude that out and scale it down to make a point.
And I'm just, you know, again, tweaking some of the vertices, scaling and pulling back some of the faces. Uh, I can scale the tip down of the, the claw a little. Okay, uh, now I want to uh, select the faces at the tip of the thumb. And I'm just going to, from top view, which is again seven on the number pad, I'm going to pull it back and rotate it because the thumb does uh, sort of um, rotate and uh, sort of face inwards towards the body a little. Now I'd like to create some pads for the, uh, you know, the bottom of the paw, um, and of course the fingers as well. So I can just go to uh, face select. and select these six faces and type I to inset and then I can extrude that out with E and I select those faces again I'm going to rotate it so it's a little flatter against the the palm of the paw and I'll do the same thing with the fingers. I'll select these two faces at the tip of each finger and just extrude those out. So now I can use the reference image to align the hands in both the front and the, uh, the right side view. So once you have the hands lined up, you can use Alt and right click on the mouse to select the loop around the hand and the loop around the wrist and then type W and choose bridge edge loops and that will then connect the hand to the wrist and so now we can start on the feet and the feet on quadrupeds it's actually really interesting I've always had a misconception about the anatomy of quadrupeds um, I've always, uh, I was always under the impression that they had an additional joint in their leg, in their back legs anyway, like a backward facing knee almost. Um, but in the reality, they just have an elongated foot, which is really interesting. So basically, I want my character's foot to be able to sit flat on, on the ground, but also go up onto, uh, onto the tip of its toes like it would if it were on all fours. And this is the skeleton of a cat's foot to, uh, to represent what I meant by the, the quadrupeds having an elongated back foot. Um, but we're going to select this loop and type Shift S and choose cursor to select it. And then Shift A and choose circle. And again, make this eight vertices and scale it in. Now I'll position this right where the ankle begins and I'll extrude it down on Z. And press F to add a face and select the vertices opposite one another and type J to join them. Then I'll select the middle edge and type V to disconnect those edges. And again, I'll move each side out a little to make room for uh, the faces in the middle. So I'll select both of those edges and type W and bridge edge loops. And then I can select the top two vertices and type Alt M and choose merge at center. And then I can select these three edges and type F to face them. And that creates our triangle. And then we can just select the, the six faces at the bottom and extrude down to create the, the start of our foot. And the foot's actually much easier than the hand. Now I'm going to select the three front faces and extrude those on Y. Now I'll extrude out one more time. And then I can scale this on X so that it's a little wider. And then maybe I'll select some faces on the heel and scale them in on X 
to make it a little more narrow. Now just like with the fingers, I'm going to select the middle toe and extrude it out on Y. Extrude out again and scale up and extrude one more time and scale down. And then with this face selected, I can type I to inset. And now I'm just going to extrude this out on Y again and bring it down and scale to a point. And that will be the, the claw for the toe. And now I'll select the faces at the tip of the toe, leaving the, uh, the one connecting to the foot unselected. And from top view, I'm going to duplicate it with Shift D and then rotate it. And I'll do this again for the other side because there will be three toes in the front. Okay, and now I can delete those two faces and then connect them by holding Alt and right clicking on those loops and then typing W and bridge edge loops. Okay, easy. So that's that's the foot basically done. Um, we still need to uh, connect it to the leg, of course. First, I'm going to create these pads on the bottom of the feet, just like we did with the hands. Just selecting faces and extruding them down, and then scale them in a little. Okay, and I can select these on the bottom of the toes and I to inset and here I can change my pivot point to individual origins and then scale them down and now I can extrude these areas down that will of course create those little toe pads um, but they look a little large so I'm going to select all of the loops around them and type W and choose smooth uh, which it smooths them a little too much so if you press T you can bring up your uh, toolbar over here and you can actually control the the amount of smoothing um, so I'm going to adjust it so that it looks a little more uh, rounded Okay, so that's looking better. Um, I still think that they look a little wide. And I don't want to spend too much time tweaking this area that you'll, you know, you, you'll probably not see a lot of. Um, but I would like to round the toes out a little and maybe make them a little more thin. You know what I can do since I'm still on individual origins um, I can select all of the faces on the, the bottom of each toe and just uh, scale them in a little on X and that will that will make them I think look a little better Yeah, okay, so that looks good. Now if I just hover over the foot and, and type L, it'll select the whole foot, and I can rotate it on Z so that it, it fits along with the reference image. And then select both loops, press W, and bridge edge loops. And now they are connected. Okay, so that's most of the body done. Um, the backside looks a little funny to me, so I'm going to select a group of these faces and then uh, smooth it by typing W and choosing smooth. Uh, but it pulled apart because we uh, disabled the clipping in the mirror modifier. So I'll just enable it and then smooth it again. 
and it looks a little better. And I think that's it for this video. So the next time we'll be working on the head and of course everything inside of the head like the tongue and teeth, gums and so on. And uh, we'll add the tail and the ears and eyes of course. Uh, but it's been fun and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks again for watching.